Well, alright, hello all of YouTube land, my name is Wildboy5699, and welcome to this, a game called Doki Doki Exit Music. A couple things I want to address before I play this game. First off, uh, this is a Doki Doki Literature Club mod, this is the first mod I'm ever going to play on YouTube. Um, I've been stupidly attached to Doki Doki Literature Club, and I probably shouldn't be, um, but I've been really, I really love the original game. And I decided to take a break before I go too deep into that game because I already watched the videos, YouTube, many videos on YouTube about Sorori killing herself and then it messes up the, and then it goes into a complete different direction and basically starts a new game or a new act and it's really, really confusing and I watch videos and I know what to expect in the original Doki Doki Literature Club but this is a mod that is unofficial with the game. This has nothing to do with the game. The people behind the original Doki Doki Miracle Club made nothing. This is a fan game. I've seen I've seen a YouTuber named BG Mike play this. It was it seems like he said this was one of the best mods ever. One of the best mods he's played ever. And like I said, I've been stupidly attached to Doki Doki Literature Club. My freaking profile picture is Nat, uh, Natsuki sleeping. I bought a Doki Doki Literature Club shirt online. I may even buy, spend $40 on a Doki Doki Literature Club hat. I'm getting stupidly attached to this game, and I probably really shouldn't be. But this game is so... The original Doki Doki Literature Club is so powerful yet amazing at the same time. But we're going to take a break from the original game and play this one. Play this mod called Doki Doki Exit Music. This game... It's a romance story between your character and Natsuki. And easily, Natsuki is going to come my favorite character in Doki Doki Literature Club. It was originally, it was, well, I was leaning towards Siori, but the more time, but the more things I did with Natsuki, she's easily become my favorite character in Doki Doki Literature Club. So, is my second. So, but Natsuki is my favorite character in Doki Doki Literature Club as of right now. So, this, I wanted to play something that has a story. I'm, I'm, going, in, I'm going into this game. I kind of know what to expect. I try to not watch the ending to the game. I, I, I have a feeling it's not going to end well with the game, but I wanted to play this just for the heck of it. This, I don't know if I'm going to finish the whole game and then go back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I may do back and forth. Maybe do, uh, do, maybe do one day of exit music and then Doki Doki Literature Club the next day. It will just depend. But we, I wanted to play this one for a while. Let's jump into it, finally. I'm going to shut up and jump into it. Please enter your name. Okay. C-O-L-T-O-N. There we go. And this Monday... I think this place during the festival, right before, I think you catch, so you're already trying not to kill herself, or trying to kill herself. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be one of the days where I'll be walking to school with Siori. But Siori isn't answering her phone, I consider going to her house to wake her up. It's not a big deal, at least the way for her to wake her up. Even the simple gestures waking her, walking her to school makes her really, really happy. Also, I just want to record that it's like 9.45 at night, so just want to point that out there. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always may have been. That's all she needs to. That's all she needs, and I, what I want to give her. The hell with it. I'll go get her. I'll grab the cupcakes and the zaki I made yesterday. And make my way to see yours. I keep saying Nasuki, but it's not Suki. I gotta keep saying that it's not Suki. Not Suki. I reached to yours house and knocked on the door. I don't expect to answer, but she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. There's no music. She's really, she's a, she's really heavy slipper. I swallow. I can't believe I'm go ended up doing this after all. I hope this doesn't fucking jump scare us and freaks out and goes back to the original game. Waking up, walking in her house. This is something a boyfriend would do. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sierra's room, I knocked on the door. Sierra, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really don't want to leave. Uh, isn't this kind of breach of privacy? But she really isn't no choice. I gently open the door. Please don't kill yourself. Sierra, Colton. Sorry, stands, stands at the foot of her bed with a long rope in her hand. It tied to a hangman's noose. In the shocking moment, I released my gear to the cupcakes. What the fuck? It's not what it is. Like hell, it's not what it looked like. I'm so sorry, Colton. I can't believe this. Siori would, wouldn't do something like this. Jesus, Siori. I should have known that it was this bad. Siori drops the noose on the floor. Siori, why haven't you talked to anybody about this? I don't want to waste people's time. You're not wasting anybody's time. We all just want to be. We all just want you to be happy. Live like you made us. You really deserve to be happy. I know you don't don't think that now, but well, it's the truth, and I'm determined to help you in every step of the way. But you'll. But you need to start. You need to talk about this. I. I can't. I just. There is a short pause. All is silent aside from Siori Solvent. I was about to do a Colton. I have. I have never seen you again. I'm sorry. Can you imagine if I found you like that in the original game? It's bad. I, I, Siori, listen, it doesn't matter what you're going through, you always have a reason to stay with us. Even if this, even if there's one thing worth living to you, then you need to hold us to that. I know there is. You told me yourself, yourself yesterday, Colton. She releases the grip and backs away. 
We we know it'll be tough, but I'll be there for you. We all will. No matter what. Colton, don't. Now listen to me. You need to talk to somebody professional about this. I'm not asking I'm not taking no for answers to you, right? I don't think I'm ready. We can go another time. Not a chance. You seriously need professional help as soon as possible. We're leaving now. I don't I don't know if I can. Sorry, do it. For me, for, if not for me, if not for yourself. She sniffles, wiping the face on her sleeve. Okay. Come on, let's go. To the doctors. We'll take the bus. Colton, the festival. Screw the festival. You're more important than that. Well, I need to get changed first. Oh, of course. I now take a step outside Richard door, pick up the rope. Pick up the rope. There you go. Pick up the rope. Take it with me just in case. She gently nods, shutting the door in my face. I'm a little anxious leaving her alone right after something like this. Regardless, she needs her privacy. I kneel down, begging, beginning to clean up the coke as early as before and without. Natsuki is going to kill. Not. You keep saying that fucking name wrong. It's Natsuki. Not, not Natsuki. Like, Natsuki. Natsuki. I run downstairs and untie the noose, gripping the loose rope in the trash. I linger downstairs for a minute or two before heading back upstairs. She's probably ready by now. I knock at Siri's door and she answers. Ready? Siri nods once her eyes glued to the floor. This is what's best for me, right? She stares at me, expecting an answer. I fell out easy, but answer with it. I know it is. Come on, let's get going. Hospital. I'm sitting down in the waiting room outside the doctor's office, patiently waiting for Joey to return. I'm anxious. My phone buzzes quietly. I remember today was supposed to be the day of the festival. The text is from Monica. Where are you? I have to reply. I'm busy. Really, Colton? Please don't tell me you got a cold feet. You got cold feet about the poems or something. It's a bit more serious than that. What's going on? I don't know if I can tell you right now, but it's serious, okay? You gotta believe me. Fine. Just hurry up and bring Sari with you. I look at the door. Through the small window, I can see Sari breaking down on her chair, her red sitting on the doctor's desk. I feel terrible knowing that I let her reach such a point due to my own neglect. Behind me, the door leads from the entrance. We're waiting for the door swings open. A couple of nurses walk by. My phone buzzes again in my hand. I turn the attention back to it. It's just me and it's just me and you're here, damn it. Why? Where's Natsuki? I DK, but please get here quick and bring Siri, okay? It's a personal issue. I can't promise anything right now, but I'll try to get to the festival before it's over, okay? Okay. A couple of minutes of idle waiting passes before I get another message from her. Forget it. Everyone's here in their waiting. We'll have to cancel. I return my phone to pocket, return, running my hands through my hair. Why now? I felt terrible for Siri and the fact she's in pain right now. All we leave for all. But on the other hand, I feel like I put Monica and Yuri on the spot in front of all our classmates. Monica and Yuri. That reminds me of something that Monica told me. Where is Natsuki? Suddenly the door opened way into another, and however, she is going by someone familiar. Oh my fucking god, what the fuck happened? Whoa. Holy motherfucking shit! Wow, she fuck. What the fuck happened? She getting into a fight? Natsuki, are you okay? She quickly turns around, exiting the hospital in tears. What the fuck? I jump out of my seat to speak to her, but a nurse staring at me suspiciously. I take a seat once more. Anxious about Nuzaki's well being as well as you are. What the fuck is going on with this goddamn club? Excuse me, what happened to her? She explains that Natsuki went in the hospital bloody and bruised looking for help. Poor Natsuki. She then casually asks if I had anything to do with Natsuki's injuries. Christ, no. I don't even know what's going on. There's so many fucking things. This poor, my poor character. I had to bring my friend here. She tried to. I stopped myself. Don't do it. I, didn't, I doubt Siori won't want me to talk about her friends or struggle with me. Not now. Or listen, it's serious, okay? I bite my lip and it continues her way. My phone buzzes again. Are you sure you don't know what ha where Siori and Natsuki are? I already told you, I don't know. I can't tell her about Natsuki either. Chances are it's her own pushing up issue and she can't deal with me in her own way. Still, maybe I should text her. It doesn't matter anyway. We had to cancel our performance. People are complaining about the cupcakes not being here. You're, you, you're done up for fresh air. Jesus, I'm sorry, okay? My hands are tied and I can't do anything to help right now. Okay, whatever. Thanks a lot, Colton. Oh, fuck. Now, now I've pissed Monica off because I couldn't bring myself to tell her what happened. I decided to text that Natsuki quickly about what I just saw. A couple of minutes passed by with no response. The messages don't don't even mark as read. The office door swings open as some warrior emerges. Colton, are you okay? Not really. I'm just stressed out. How are you? I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure? Because I'm here for you. I can just... Colton, please. Can we just drop this? I don't want to make a big deal out of it, especially in front of the other club members. I stand up. Suri, I don't think you understand how big of a deal this really is. You're nearly... You, you really ne you're nearly killed yourself. I don't think... I think you should go home and rest for a couple of days, okay? I guess I'll have to write. <laughs> Suri lets out a small bout of almost nervous laughter. It's a good idea, Alish. You know that. But what about the festival? I hesitate. I don't want Suri to feel like it's her fault about the performance was canceled, so I decided to start with Nezuki's absence. Well, that's a key. 
didn't actually show up either. Monica had to cancel the performance, unfortunately. You didn't tell her, did you? About, I didn't. Unless you want me to talk about, unless you want to her to talk about it, she, she won't know. Okay? Jerry not. I think I'll tell her. She, so she knows why, what her plans of festival were ruined. I can tell her, I can tell her what she's going to say. It wasn't your fault, Suri. None of this. Suri grabs my hand, crushing the advice to grip. You can talk to her if you really want to. Hell, she'll probably be able to give me better advice than me, damn it. Maybe. Did you tell my parents? I sigh. Oh, I ripped my pants. I did, yeah. I'm sorry, though. I felt like I had to, man. Thanks. I was scared I had to tell them myself. Suri glances down and premises to the floor. I love you, Colton. I. Despite her condition, I can't tell her a lot. It would be unfair to have her house disturbed like that. You keep my mouth shut. Oh, you fucking idiot. Why? Why do that shit? Don't pull a fucking character from Emily's away, damn it. Do not do that. Anyway, we should get going, you fucking asshole. There's no point going to school now. Wait, what time is it? It's about midday, lunchtime. It's fucking 10 o'clock at night. Why am I, why does I have to record it so late at night? I have no idea. You missed the, we missed the festival. If we turn up, if we turn up now, Monica's just gonna get mad at us. Come on, I'll take you home. We can talk some more there. She gently nods, following my lead. We exit the hospital and ride a bus back to her house. I decided to stay with Suri now just to make sure she's feeling better. We have at least a few hours together. We spend that time together talking and watching shows together. Her mother arrives first, thanking me for letting her know that what happened. I'll tell her it's no problem. She tells me that Suri's father is on his way and that I'm free to leave with Bowen. I'm through. I'm sure she's safe. I'll leave with the, I'll leave with her and her mother and head at home. Entering the kitchen, I flick the light on something to make myself a camp sandwich cutting tomato. However, I start to wonder about Natsuki. I remember the time I spent with her, a little scruffle over the cupcakes icing. But the bruise, her nosebleed, what the hell happened to her? And who in the right would do that to her? Fucking starting shit. This is, I I think, I, if I'm reading correctly, I think she's getting a... It's not 100% confirmed about not, not to keep being abused, but I think it was her father. It's not 100%... It's not confirmed in the game, but I have a feeling what that is. Possible reason for it began to crystallate my head. Maybe she just fell over. She, could she got into a fight with another classmate of ours? Or maybe... No. Surely not. Maybe I'm just overreacting to this situation. It's been a rough day after all. But something told, but something she told me we, we were reading manga together sticks in my head. I don't even know what my dad would do, do if he found this. I shiver at the thought. It's the only real reason that I've come up to here to see Natsuki's terrible injuries. I couldn't even get that image out of my head if I was the character. I noticed that while I was distracted, I accidentally cut my finger open, slicing the tomato. Ah, oh, crap. I got peanut butter on my penis. Oh, mother... Oh, man. I got peanut butter on my penis. Uh, I wrap my finger in a paper towel, letting the drops of the Lord suck so far into it. Throwing the paper towel in the trash, so I think back to Natsuki. I decide I'll ask about her father next time I see her. Even though she assures me that I'm... Even though, even if she assures me I'm wrong, at least I'll know. I eat my sandwich and head upstairs to my room. I collapse onto my bed, exhausted from the stress the day I had brought me. I drift into the unconsciousness with minutes. You didn't even eat your fucking sandwich, did you? You eat a fast Wednesday. What, what, what happened to Tuesday? What's wrong with Tuesday? Gary! Oh, hi, Colton. I'm back at the literature club. Craning my neck, I look around the club room. It's empty. Yuri and I are the only people here. I leave the classroom door open to expect other members to shortly arrive. Hey, Yuri. I sit down at my desk, unpacking the uh, sanitary kit she did on her. Uh, she did on her. Listen, I know Monica canceled the club yesterday, so I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Also, Yuri's kind of a bitch in this game, if I'm, if I'm correct. I've seen bits and pieces of this game, but I'm not seeing the whole ending about it. But I can, people are saying that she's a bitch in this game. Trying to get into the character's pants. I'm just saying. I don't know if it's true or not, but we're going to find out later. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry she had our little reservations go. Don't worry about it, Colton. Monica told me that it wasn't your fault you couldn't come. She said it was something serious. Yeah, it was a bit It was a bit of a emergency. I decided to play down the situation in case Yuri doesn't know the whole story. I don't want to worry after all. Are you alright? Me? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I just have to worry about my friend trying to kill herself and my other friend had bruises and shit all over her face. It was someone else. Someone close. I see. Well, I hope everything works out for you and your friend. I hope so too, Yuri. I'm only past the complete Yuri sat down with that still reading. The class is still empty aside from us. So, uh, Yuri. Yuri jumps in the- Eww. So, I like in the sound. Yes. You haven't seen Monica today, have you? I'm afraid not, Colton. She has been, she has been in the mood since the festival, unfortunately. Not, not that I'm being so rude about it. It did mean a lot to her after all. I know it did. Why do I feel so bad for every character in this game? That's why I wanted to speak to her. Maybe if I explain what Sayori, why Sayori was absent, she might forgive me. 
Well, the both of us. But I promise you, I wouldn't say anything to Monica. Has she, has Monica said anything to me about the festival? Not really. I mean, she did complain that the three of you were gone. I was kind of thankful that we got canceled. Not, not to ruin Monica's plans or anything. I never do such a thing officially. I know you wouldn't, Yuri. Don't worry. You're good, girl. You're good. I can tell you, you're too good of a person to be so mean. Besides, you have no reason you want to sabotage her like that. Right? Yuri flowers at the moment, still lost for words. Not at all. It's just that I don't even know if I should be telling you this, but, well, I overheard Monica talking about you and Yuri, one of her friends. I wasn't eavesdropping, though. Never. What did she say? I heard that she mentioned the only good reason to cancel it is somebody died. What? Monica wouldn't say something like that, right? She's a sweetheart. <laughs> Once you realize that she's in the game, she's trying to ruin everybody to laugh. Besides, not only is that in I can't read that word. It's in I can't read that word either. Even if she did, and even if she didn't know about Sierra, it felt like she was too close to reality. Wow, that's harsh. I doubt she's in it though. What I meant what I mean to say is she was no one position way to say that. I understand that she was too frustrated about this, but she but there's never a good reason to say such a horrible thing. It's like my drama club. I remember not in drama club, my high school not high school, my college theater. Something came up towards during one rehearsal. Uh, I can't explain what happened, but something happened with my little cousin and he had to go to the hospital. Uh, I cannot even explain why he did and I didn't even have the chance to call anybody or say anybody saying, Hey, even man, I got a message. I couldn't even reply back because of how stressed out and busy it was. And then the next day, I went to college and went to practice. And one person said, "Hey, you're lucky we didn't uh, take drop you from the role and have it to somebody else." I said, "I'm sorry, I had the personal information." They're like, "Well, if somebody would have died, you could have let us know." I was like, "I would have told you, but you have to give me some time to say it." Just saying. Sometimes drama theater can be really rough, and so yeah. I understand that she was frustrated about it, but there was never a good reason to say such horrible things about Yuri's words get caught in her own throat, but she retreats it into the confines of her book. I turn to see Monica standing in the door giving Yuri a chance player. She doesn't even dare meet Monica's gaze instead of contracting for her. I wish I could do the same. I swallow. She hops and starts talking. Where is she already not seeking? She stares at Yuri and says, like, Monica's friends in media. I don't know, Monica. I haven't seen them. She gives me an attic stare and her emerald piercing in my confidence face. Did Yuri tell you about the hospital? Are you sure? Yeah. All right then. How come you? How come you weren't there at the festival, Colton? I had a family emergency. At this, that's what I said. That's what I said when I had my college meeting. I had a family emergency. You don't need to know the rest. It's none of your fucking business. Sorry to be hateful, but it's a family emergency. Not going into detail because it's none of your business. Sorry. At this point, I'm practically lying to her face to keep Monica's secret. Monica, uh, keep Monica's secret. Siori's secret safe until she feels comfortable confining to Monica. Then again, I know Suyori for so long, she's pretty much in the part chosen her chosen of my chosen family at this point. She's like a sister to me. So it's more stretching the truth than lying to her. Well, that's what I would tell myself anyway. Right. Monica is not having any of it. Even if she doesn't know what's actually going on, she must know I'm lying to her. But for Suyori's sake, I have to face her face for her. I can't betray her trust. If she finds out I told someone the private information, Monica's determined suddenly changes she looks available with the worst smile on her face. Okay, you two. Since we're the only ones here, I decided that we're going to have to cancel today's meeting. Hopefully, there won't be any more emergencies or absences tomorrow. The emphasis on those words worried me, due to how aggressively she, she spoke to me. That's all. You can leave now. Get the fuck out. Yuri looks up from her book, guiltily packs up slightly, dropping the ports of a kid there. She scurries off to the classroom without a word. Monica soon her chasing me, expecting to pack up. I nod and pick up my bag, eggs in the hobble without another word. Do I want to save it? Yeah, I'll save it. Why not? Just be safe and say something crashes. Walking through the school's dorm dormant hallways, I reach the door, kind of goes place my hand. I forgot my own sanitary. I'm an idiot. What does that mean? I return to the club room hastily. I found a leather pencil case I open. I swap it into my bag and realize the pen is missing. I quick glance around the rack. I conclude that I must have lost it earlier. It's a courtyard. I know it's Yuri. Yuri! She's moving in a hurry, clutching her bag tightly against her chest, wiping her face away from her sleep. Yuri! She doesn't notice me at first, so I drug the catch up there. Yuri, what's wrong? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, hi, hi. It's nothing. Really? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm alright, really. I don't believe her. My eyes meet yours for a brief moment. And she looks away. I can tell there's something terrible happened a few minutes in the few minutes we were separated, but... Well, what could have brought her to this day? I take a hold of her shoulder and try to slow her down. She can face me. She jumps with a complaint that she's held by the school's interest. Yuri, whatever's on your mind, you can tell me. I'm your friend after all. It's not much, but... It was just Monica, what Monica said. Monica. 
What could she have said? Well, if you don't mind me asking, what did she say? I don't really feel comfortable talking about it, if you're okay with that. Monica must have said something really hurtful. It's fine, I understand. Well, if you're sure about it, you're always welcome to talk to me, though. I guess it'll be nice. It'll be nice. I guess it'll be nice if you walked with me. Maybe we can talk about it on the web. Sorry isn't here and I got some time to kill. Besides, I feel like I can't refuse. Not sure why she's so emotional. Okay. I'm sure that'll be nice. Following Yuri, I take the opposite turn to my usual walk home. Soon enough, I find myself part of the town that I rarely visit. The walk between us is mostly silent. Yuri occasionally sips while wiping her face. What the hell did Monica say to her? Is Monica evil in this game as she is in the original game? I hope not. I decided to make some light conversation. Nothing about writing might be nice, but she doesn't comfort to talking to me. Something she's passionate about, after all. Uh, so Colton, how you how do you like writing poems? You must have read my mind. Well, I usually like to listen to music while I write, even if it's just a quiet, playing softly in the background. You know what I mean. Really, most of the time, I just feel like I can I can write in silence. It leaves me with my own mind to express in the thoughts. Thoughts sometimes I do like listening to soft piano track. Do the lyrics alter the way you write? Well, yeah, I guess that I guess that's what I'm looking for most of the time anyway. I like for the mood and the music to affect the right early. Unless it's something especially passionate about, then I can just write it in any condition. That actually sounds a little an effective technique. I'll be sure you try it out. At this point, Yuri seems to perk up her eyes dry. I decided to continue our conversation, and I, as I still don't know how much longer to live her her house. I know Siori likes to hum and to little turn to herself while she writes. I wonder what Natsuki does. Natsuki? I've been trying to contact her since I saw her at the hospital. Yeah, this is supposed to be a game about Natsuki, and I've seen her one time in this video. Where the fuck is she? But she hasn't responded on messages. She hasn't shown up for school all this week either. God, what could have happened? Was it really her father? I don't want to believe it, but the pieces are fit together. Her absence. Her ability to contact anybody. What she said about him. But most of all, the bruises. Like, clearly, if I ever saw a friend, a close friend, with bruises, cuts, and all them on their faces. This happened one time I saw it on Facebook. And I'm thinking, what the fuck happened to you? And she's like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. It's just makeup effects. I swear, I swear. I She was a girl that I couldn't even, I couldn't believe half the time. So so I just went along with this. Like, okay, good. So I didn't even try to make the tape. So I haven't spoken to her in like fucking five years. If I find out he lay a finger on her, I'll break that motherfucker in half. I wish. So I'll be honest. I don't disrespect her or anything. Here's where to, my turn of thought. Natsuki's poems are just a little too simply for my liking. I suppose I lack a certain edge. I spaced out again. Yeah. Speaking of Natsuki, however, I think we just passed our house in. Where? Which one? Yuri looks at me a little surprised in urgency. Regardless, she points out the house to me. It's that house if I remember correctly. Why, thanks for that. That's not her house. I don't really want to hear about Natsuki. Well, I guess I just wanted to. Right. The rest of the journey is made in silence. I worry to Yuri got the wrong person, but she's not much I can do. Eventually, we arrive singing on the way to Dubai. You know, Colton, you're quite different when no one's around. When it's just the two of us, Yuri falls silent for a moment lost in thought. Listen, I'd love to stay and talk with her really, but I would... Oh man, dude, come on. I know you got a bunch on your plate, but... Say thank you or something. Fuck. Give her a hug. It's fine. I get it. You have places to be. Her head draws the direction not to be cast over me. It's fine. I got some writing to do anyway. I want to feel bad for Yuri, but I understand she's not... What late, I know what, she's kind of a bitch and later goes later into this mod, but I don't think she's a big of a bitch in Doki Doki Literature. But she's about the same quiet person in the original game, I hope. If I ever get her back around to it. She turns around and starts to walk to the door. No, please, don't get the wrong idea, Yuri, I'm not. It's fine, Colton. I can take a hint. I'll see you tomorrow. Fuck, dude. Before I finish my exclamation, she already entered her house. I feel terrible knowing you're very flawless yourself on my rejection, but I leave quickly regardless. As I turn into... It was a different picture, though. Lou was a different in the demo version. I turn a corp not just gives out my attention to her death. On the second floor of the back end, large him and leave belt and lanes against. Is that her dad? Jesus Christ. He's on the phone, but I can't help her here when the security comes. The man mutters something about having business to attend to. Fucking walk up to him and punch him in the fucking stomach. In the eye. Whatever. Business. If he means what I think he is, I'll kill him. Backtracking your eyes, but I'll make my way back to school and then to my house from there. Oh, fumbling with my keys and unlock the door. I enter the bedroom, hurry, get changed my uniform, and get into some dark clothing. Okay, I'm about to say the fucking crash. A short jog brings me back to her house. I take a seat within the bus stop on the street opposite there, stalking out, staking out her father. I ponder over if he's already gone, perhaps I miss him leaving, or maybe he's still dealing with the business. After a few minutes, however, I'm proven wrong, but the sounds of an engine revving, revving a new expensive-looking performance car 
from the driveway of Nozaki's house. It speeds around the corner within seconds, and once I'm certain that it's gone, I'll move to Nozaki's house and the bell. Ring the doorbell. I wait. Nothing. I press it on it again. Once more. No answer. Growing ever anxious, I knock the door heavily, aggressively banging on the fist of my door. Natsuki! Open the fucking door! A moment of silence. The floor on the second one, a cold portman back, a flash of pink just quickly. I watch in a test, waiting for any sound of movement until I hear the sound or being unhinged and deadbolt. Natsuki, ready to jump? I don't know what to be great about, but I'll wait nervously. Okay. Colton, what the hell are you doing here? It's Natsuki. Thank God. Natsuki, are you alright? What happened to your bruises? What bruises? I don't know what you're talking about. She's playing dumb, even though I saw her. What could have happened to her be so devoted with keeping a secret? Before I can reply, she grabs me out of the collar and yanks me into the foyer. Hey! How do you, how do you hick, hick? How do you know where I live? She's been drinking. I'm calling it. Uh, now it's, now, not stem. Have you, has she been drinking? Better question, where have you been? I haven't been feeling good these past few days. No need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe that after what I saw? Not so key. I know something's wrong. I saw you at the hospital, remember? Oh, that. She giggles. That was nothing. Don't worry about it. That's much worse. Worry about this. What do you mean? Come with me. I could do another glass anyway. She grips my arm loosely and tries me to move along with the, through her house. And she moves. She begins to eat erratic wobbly as she has trouble walking. She holds my, holds tighter onto my arm for support. She stumbled on the early tips. I kept her watching around the head and chest pulling her up. Thanks. That's not like her. Normally, if I grab her for whatever reason, she freaked out and call, call me gross or something like that. But here, she didn't even flinch or say anything about it. Something feels off. I really scrape up brain as she struggles her way along. I insist moving up and just making sure she doesn't knock the potatoes. We finally make it upstairs and Nazaki gets me to her room. Her room's a mess. Fucking clean! The cleanest room I've ever fucking seen! Her floor is a little lanterns whipped in pieces of paper. Pick it up, I recognize one of the protagonists of Parfait Girls. The cover is in heavy la laminated cardstock and is ripped in two. There is no way Nazaki would be able to tear this and sap herself. Not only that, but she has no reason to either. But I couldn't think of something one who does. There's a large bottle of weight Ryan kept with lying inside of her bed. Only a small drip escaped staying in her bed. She cringed up. That can't be much a little left. I knew she'd been drinking, I can tell from the moment I opened the door. Natsuki, you haven't drunk this all yours right. She looks flustered. Of course I have, you dummy. That's a bit much, isn't it? Uh, that doesn't matter. I haven't finished it. I haven't even finished. She threw the ball from the bed. I reach out and take a hand from her. Natsuki. Nuh-uh, it's mine. She holds the bottle and just really tries to push me away. She's too weak, however, I strongly improve her arm aside. Come on, that's enough. Colton, please. I need this. Something about the way she sent me a pain and drain through my body. Before I can reach my arm for a second, the reminder of the bottle of contents are gone. Looking at her bed drawer, I see Natsuki's phone. It's overturned, so I can only see her case. That case is glittery and pink. This drink is nice, Colton. Natsuki, talk to me. Talk to me, honey. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> I'll be in like plasma say Steve when he says he's going to edit that out. That was bad. I'm sorry. I know something's going on with your dad. Please, I just want to help. But I can't help you if you don't tell me what's going on. That's This is all the help I need. She claps on the bed and giggles. I haven't felt this happy in so long. I grow more uneasy hearing that. Why is that fucking star looks like the fucking Peter Pan to go to Neverland? Is it the bottle? Is it the lamp? She has to go to the door and escape her demon. How bad is this demon she's trying to escape from? As the kiki begins to snore, she grits the water and rolls under the bed. To my surprise, it doesn't shatter. Instead, it rolls under the bed. Shaking my head, I bend down, try to roll under her bed. Reaching my hand underneath the bucket, fill the wine bottle. And something else. What the? I pull up beneath the bed. It's drugs. Placing the wine bottle in Natsuki's phone, I take a whatever cover. It's a white container made of plastic. This isn't right. The this is a bottle of pills looking for her. Looking for a description. I hand Haley Sharp and realize that they are ibuprofen tablets. That's not good. Fucking, you know, if you take too much BC powder, this happened to my family. I have some, one of my family members had migraines or something, and she had, she used, she ate, or used too much BC powder, and that had, like, it half her stomach, she was in a coma for a couple of weeks. I turn on that, I turn to look in the second fast asleep, I worried, oh my fucking god, this is not good. I checked, we checked the label on the box that they prescription two, two days ago. She's, the music, god damn, she's trying to overdose. I just went down my forehead again. Like, you need to take her. You need to get, get her. Get the. She needs to get the fuck out of here. She stopped snoring. I finally shake. Leave my body. Please, Nazaki. Please wake up. It's climbing much colder than it should be. I put my ear next to her mouth to see if she's breathing. Thankfully, she is, but it's faint. I take her by the shoulder. And, oh my god, this is getting intense. I'm seeing this bitch. Should I crush down on the head supporting her? Nazaki. I am probably calling an ambulance, but I'm worried it'll draw too much attention to her house. The hell with her. Just fucking slap her across the face. See if that wakes her up. I don't care what happens as long as she lives. I reach into my pockets and fuck. Fuck. My phone isn't there. Fuck. This is not good. I reached into her bed and 
That's a good phone tap. Like, I bring up my face, press down the power button. The screen lights up from the bottom of the show. Like, I try to make an emergency call, but the phone is almost stopped with my chest. Dropping the phone, I pull my face close to me, hoping and praying that she wakes up. Please God. I begin to sound terrified for her life. When Nozuki bend the cover radically, a similar panic and relief. She opens her eyes, unsteadily rises to their feet. Nozuki, please tell me you're okay. Hi. She falls silent. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. My nose is salt, but the next bottle of wine is... Fuck. Don't. She's gonna die. She's gonna die. Oh my god, why am I fucking freaking out about this? It stinks. Well, at least again, daily mixtures out of her body. But she's still in trouble. Natsuki turns to me half conscious pleading. Colton, help me. She stumbles back, laying the position on her bed. I don't want to die. Don't look at me, okay? You won't. You won't. You hear me? I won't let you die. Natsuki, listen to me, okay? I'll be right back. She nods weakly, barely, barely aware of her surroundings. I need to find something. To, I need to find her something to eat, hopefully. It should observe what from the alcohol. Bolting down the stairs to the kitchen within seconds. I swing open the cupboard and I see the refrigerator. Nothing. Not even a slice of bread. What the f- When did she last eat? That's not good. Exiting the kitchen, I look around the house. Hurrying back to the Nazika, I check up on her. She's pale as ever, but she's conscious at least. She weakly raises her head to look at me. Hey, hey, Nazuki, I need you to pay attention to me, okay? That music, though. I like the music, though. I need you to pay attention to me, okay? Just whatever you do, don't go to sleep. Freddy Krueger will come after your ass. I need to take this more seriously. I really need to do it. Please, Nazuki. She tries to mind something, but it's under the I have no, no choice but to leave her again. I search everywhere in the house besides your father's bedroom. I approach the door and notice that I saw. I run the door multiple times before the frame gets away. Whoa! I tumble on the floor with the new splinters. I rise to my feet and flip the lights on. I switch. I search them for any that could possibly have in the bag. A few bags of various restaurants around town. I tear them open and find nothing but empty containers. I return to Natsuki's room. We have to go now. Okay. Get her out of here. Do it. I help her. I help her to her feet, wrapping her arm around her shoulders, hold her face. She'll make it. I'll make sure of it. Where are we going? Somewhere safe. Going to my house. We'll make our way down the stairs. I need to keep Mr. Keating in her window. Face the conscious. The starvation mixed with alcohol and painkillers. That's not good. It's going to take us all hard. But she isn't dead. We make, we make it to the front door within time. We lost the luxury vision behind us. We move to the front porch. I can feel Natsuki's tear of soap from my shirt. We reach it again. I set her down while I open it. I scoop Nazaki off the grass and get behind us. Holding Nazaki close, I move as fast as I can down the street. As we approach the glow street lights, I begin to feel relief. I lose my grip on Natsuki. Can you walk? Yes. I think. I set her down for a moment. Her knees buckle again. I wrap her arms and make sure rough. Let's go. Okay. I end up supporting her the way tired for town. There's nobody gonna call me out looking for the look suspicious. I'm almost glad she's such a small figure, it clearly makes it easier too. That's why she's so small. Her father has been le leaving her malnourished, living on fast food. What does that mean? You gain weight though? I don't know, I eat, fa I eat fast food all the time. Fucking, I'm not fat. Jesus Christ. I'm not well, better do that. Finally, I recognize the family review my house. I sat in a, I sit Nazuki down on my front step. I fumble my keys for a moment, finally able to unlock the door. I help Nazuki through. She's safe from her father, at least. Thank God. I was kind of a curse, to be honest. I bring her to the kitchen, sit down on my window chairs. Why did you help me? How did you know where where I was? But don't worry, don't worry about the night. Let's just get you settled in for the night. I'm worried that it'll be longer than one night. I have a spare bedroom in my house. She'll be able to sleep there. I search through my pantry and the fridge and make something she may like. I decided to sit some toast and chicken noodle soup. Is that chicken noodle? I haven't had that in so long. Her words break my heart. Like, is this game? This game might be darker than the original Donkey Club. How long? How long has she lived like this? I watch the clock. Clock and Natsuki eats. It's late. Now that I'm in the pan, I realize pork is still drenched in her own stomach acid. Ooh, yuck. Natsuki, I'm gonna need you to get changed. What? Not here. Not here, silly. Good man. I mean, you can change in the spare bedroom. But I don't have any of my clothes. You can borrow some of mine. Okay. But only because I have to. Nazuki seems to be in much better shape after her meal. She stands up to her core to return her ball to the kitchen counter. She slowly but the rail Despite Despite the stink of being clogged up my nose, I finally calm to him. Calm down. You're good. You got her safe. That's all that matters. Nazuki's skin tone is returned to Mostly she looks scared, scarred by the night experience. Once she returns empty-handed, I ask her to follow me to her room. To her room? Come on, I'll show you where it is. Now see, Billy Tim was complaining while putting her arms around. But this time, it hurts. I inhale sharply. Are you okay, Colton? My shoulder is in pain. The adrenaline of the situation has not settled. Maybe barging that door was a bad idea, not only because of the pain, but the damage it caused, too. When a Zach Nat Zacchaeus' dad returns home, I'm alright, don't worry, don't worry about me. Let's get you cleaned up. There's a shower in the guest room that you can use. We reach the guest room located across the hall from my bedroom. I motion towards the edge of the bed. 
Here, sit down for a minute. I'll back. I'll be back with some of the clips. She sits down. I rush to my bedroom, picking up one of the gray tops of a pair of jeans. When I bring them back, she's struggling to take off her socks. I place a fresh set of clothes on the other down and help them take off. She opens her mouth. She wants to say something, but she reluctantly lets me help. Nazuki has been through so much today, and she has no strength left. Thanks. I can take her from here. Are you sure? I really don't. Although the blood rushes to my face, she's going to have to take. She's going to take a shower. Let her go in peace. Let her go. It'll be nice to see your dad naked, but just let her go for now. Maybe you'll see your naked when if you become a couple. I never mind. It's fine. You take your time. I decided that is the best time to, I about her family. Instead, she just she needs to soothe and sour and some sleep. Meanwhile, to take take her mind off tonight's evening, even if for a few moments. Those few moments for why is this a uh, piano reminding me so? I don't know. It reminds me of the piano from Nickelback's song Lullaby. I don't know why. Maybe it's the way. Maybe that's what it comes to mind. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it comes to it. The few moments would do her a lot of good. As I stand on leaving, I could grasp gris my wrist gently. Colton, wait. I wanted to thank you again. Don't mention it, okay? I'm just glad I got there in time. Nasuki stares into my eyes. Me too. How did you know? Where was I? I walked home with Yuri. She has. She was having a bad day, so I went with her. She pointed out to your place. And ever since I saw you at the hospital, you haven't left my mind. That's why I decided to go. I tried calling you, God knows how many times, but you never answered. I cast my mind by the record phone. I guess I know why. I saw every one of your calls, but I can't answer because of the stupid screen. Don't cry, Nasuki. When all I wanted to do was hear your voice, I couldn't. I just wanted to go back to the club and sit with you under the window to read more together. Because when we do, it's the only time I really feel safe. Well, not anymore. Of course, her parfait girl magnet was torn apart. She looks down at the ground dejectedly. I live, leave Nasuki the shower. After getting changed myself, I sit on the edge, gripping the parfait, gripping the parfait girls like myself. The water stops running, the air being closed. I wait for a few moments before knocking the door. Natsuki, I have something else for you. Oh, Elton. Natsuki opens the door, looking healthy again. She looks good. In my clothes, just saying. Maybe I should have. If I was this guy, I would bring her. I would like either let her wear my buck cherry shirt or my Nickelback shirt. I'm actually wearing my uh, Natsuki shirt. My uh, Nickelback shirt right now was just something I threw on. I gotta look decent for my videos. I can't do it in my fucking underwear. <laughs> she uh, She's out of her daily clothes and on the wearing my shirt along with my pants. The top doesn't fit it very well, though. Well, the shirt's massive on me. I couldn't get a sm I can get a smaller one of you. I like it. You don't need to. Are you sure? Yeah. I present the manga to her. I saw what happened to your coffee at Pop Red Girls back in the club, so I just thought I dropped my own for you, so you can uh, read it if you want. Nasuki gives me a weak smile, but sincere smile. She reaches out and grabs the manga. I loved you, Colton. My phone's going on. Let me check that real quick. Five minutes later. And we are back. <laughs> Instead of pulling the manga from my hands, I expect she grabs some words to try to sit down in the bed next to her. But only if we read it together. Fair enough. It's the least I can do to make her happy. She needs it. So do I, in a way. First having to do with Sorori's attempt suicide, now Natsuki. God, how terrible must her home life be if she wanted to escape like that? Well, I can take a guess Sarah and how the lack of food of her house. And her face when I saw her at the hospital. Christ. Uh, hey, Colton. What? You just kind of stood there for a second, spacing out. God, you're worse than Sorori sometimes, you know. Hey, I'm sorry, okay? It's fine, I was only teasing you, don't you? I know that, but I shouldn't blame her. She doesn't know about Sierra's condition. And as far as I know, she hasn't seen her at the hospital. Regardless, that hurt me more than it should have. I move the duvet on the side and sit down next to Natsuki. Not Natsuki. I'm saying the name right. I'm not saying Natsuki. Not Natsuki. The fucking car is Natsuki. She pulls the covers over the two of us. We're sitting draped on our laps. We decide to read the volume together again. You're so warm. Thanks. Natsuki. Not, there I go. I just said it. Natsuki inches closer to me. We moved, we, we're not sure to start with. Can you see it okay? Not really. I inch myself line, in the line position. As you can jump. Not. <laughs> Fuck. She's my fairy character and I can't say her fucking name right. That's a pretty, that's a pretty pick. That's fucking beautiful. I kind of keep saying Natsuki. I keep saying her fucking name wrong. She's my favorite character in the fucking game. Much better. My left arm is over the door of I slide under the pillow around her. There we go. We continue to read. Oh, she never sleep here. That's my I actually changed my profile picture on all my social media to Natsuki sleeping. It was just a, I thought it was a normal picture of that. So before I know it, she's fast asleep. Natsuki. I lay there emotionlessly. I dreamed of this moment ever since I really got to know Natsuki. I hate that I had to come to the circuit, but regardless, I run my fingers through her silky pink care and brush her bangs inside. She looks so peaceful in her sleep. What is this feeling? I feel a lump in my throat. 
Just a side of our room enough to make my heart pound. You got a girl, you got a cute, good looking girl in your house. Doesn't happen to me often. If not at all. I don't recognize this. My chest is heavy. It feels like a weight on my ribs. It, but it's hard to breathe. This. This happy is the happiest moment of my life. As I dropped the manga to say, not even reading anymore, I dropped off to sleep. I jerked away by the sound of crying. Confused, I opened my eyes, staring at Lukazaki. Oh, she's crying in my sleep. Does that ever happen to you guys? You cried in your sleep? Because, I don't know why, every time I felt like I have a sad dream, I just cry in my sleep. It happens once every now and then, but it's just like, I can't, it, it's bad, it's sad, I don't know if that ever happens to anybody. She clenches the sleeve and holding me tighter than before. She saw it into my shirt furiously. Nazuki, are you? I realize that she's still asleep. Smile, sigh, I let over Nazuki's nightmare. It's, I'm certain that they're really her family, but I gave her a nudge to wake her up. As she even began to stare, I tried to calm her. Nazuki, Natsuki, it's just a dream. You're okay, you're safe. Now she key open her opens her eyes. Colton, that that was more than a dream. I watched my dad kill you. I watched him torture you for saving me. He kept telling me that it was my punishment for leaving. Colton, you should have helped me. This was wrong. This was wrong. Why, Colton? Why did you have to get involved? Shit. I I can't let you do this. Natsuki jerks away from me. Natsuki. Do you want to know why the real reason I shut up your house? I missed you. I miss reading with you, I miss reading your poems, and after the hospital I knew something happened I had to make sure you were okay. I was worried sick for days. I felt I had to. i do it to ensure your safety. I'll be, I'm gladly be tortured to man never be happy. Anything, Natsuki. Do you understand me? I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. If my words are right now, proven that I mean it, maybe this will. I would say that that dramatic performance is worth at least five <laughs> jammies. <laughs> <laughs> I raced to my feet and walked to my room. I flicked down my right, licked down my light and right there from my back. There it is. Oh, poem. You. I don't know what's happened or we have been. All I can think about is your bruises on your skin, the blood on your nose, if you're from your clothes, the sight, the sight that broke my mind for a moment. I was frozen in time and I saw you broken views. I know from there on out, I would save you. Day turned to night, you're on my mind. You on my mind, I've been sick, worried, going through something, I need to hurry. Text after case, call after call, the girl I care about the most is the one I couldn't save her after all. I return to the bed, Natsuki turns to face me. I hand her my poem. Natsuki reads, wiping her eyes as she does so. Colton. Natsuki leaks behind me and braces me tightly. I return to dress her, wrapping my arms around her. We stay together, her tears soaking through my shirt once again. After a few minutes, Natsuki eats good up. I do as well, resting my hands on her waist as... Her saying it onto my neck. That's not to keep lips or hair on a tiptoe and pick me on the cheek. Oh, I want to go back to sleep, but only if you stay with me. I, wear, I nod vigorously, gently escorts me to bed. That is fucking well done. For whoever made this, so far it's a beautiful game. Beautiful game, just about as amazing and emotional as Doki Doki, the first the original Doki Doki Literature Club. This is very well done. Laying, in, laying in my head on the pillow, she keeps her she keeps her arms around me. We drift out of the board of unconsciousness together. Thursday. Okay, I think this is going on long enough. I don't want to get too deep into the game right now. So we're going to save right there. So what do you guys think of this mod? It's very, 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 very cool. I had a fun fact before I end this video. I actually didn't know how to start up this game. I personally went to the Doki Doki mod website. I wanted to play this game. Apparently, I had to put my files into the Doki Doki Lurcher Club file. Same dude. You had to go to the original Doki Doki Lurcher Club file. Get it on Steam. Get it on. Get it in that file. What I got from Steam. Theme on there. I didn't know how to do it. I'm like, where the fuck is it? Because most games you download, you extract the files, you open it up, and it's there. You had to do a lot of shit, so it was massive. So, so when I click on the Doki Doki Literature Club game, this will pop up. I would have to delete the file. I don't know. This is just the first mod I played. Maybe the only mod. I don't know. But anyway, what do you guys think of this mod so far? I love it so far. Like I said, Natsuki is my favorite character in Doki Doki Literature Club. It was originally gonna. It was going through Siori. But it slowly became Natsuki. I've seen uh, the YouTuber Benji, BG Mike uh, playing this game. He said Natsuki is the spare Doki Doki Lurcher Club character, and this is the best mod he played. So I'm gonna give. I wanted to give this try. So hopefully, I may go back and forth. One day, I'll play the original Doki Doki, and I can do the uh, say. But thinking about it, I would have to probably delete the files and go back and forth. So I don't want to go too much of a hassle. But anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, check out my social medias down below. As always, thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you all in a future video. Take it easy.